12 News what it will take to reopen an old school. Then, local church leaders join in promising to protect immigrants seeking refuge. We hope that this is not necessary, but we are willing to do so if it is. But first, recovering from 10 inches of rainfall, FEMA is helping local residents apply for help after September's storm. 12 News starts right now. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us. The historic rains that deluged Maple Grove last September caused plenty of damage. And now thanks to FEMA, some residents could be eligible for federal assistance. And we get more from Eric Nelson. It's a frigid cold day here in Maple Grove with snow flurries flying. But back on September 21st, rain was the story. An epic storm hit this block causing significant flooding. Ground zero for the record rains was the area around 92nd Avenue, which got soaked with 10 inches. The woman down the street was on a raft going back and up and down the street. That's how much water was out of here. The water got so high it can't cover my swimming pool in the backyard. The monsoon-like storm was too much for sewer drains to absorb, which turned the neighborhood into a mini lake. So the water came in because the water came up out the sewer and went into our backyard, which came into the basement and in the garage. My daughter lost all her stuff, everything. We found at least 60 properties that were affected by the storms and there were homeowners crying and you know, it was just heartbreaking. The flooding was so bad that Hennepin County was declared a disaster area, which only happens in catastrophic situations. And it took our hot tub from the backyard down the street to the neighbor's yard. To get an individual assistance declaration is almost unheard of. There has to be so many properties damaged. Because of this, some residents might be eligible for FEMA loans and other assistance. FEMA's command center opens next week at the old Brooklyn Park Library, ready to aid anyone with specific flood damage. It has to be your walls, your roof, your sheetrock, your carpet, basically to bring you back to where you were. In Maple Grove, I'm Eric Nelson, Channel 12 News. Residents can also apply for FEMA assistance online. Hennepin County officials stress it is important to act quickly because the FEMA Relief Center will close in early January. Several Northwest Metro churches are joining a movement to protect immigrants from mass deportation. And today, the faith-based group Isaiah announced the formation of its sanctuary network. And reporter Sonia Goins joins us now with more details on that. Sonia? Right, Mike and Alex's Sanctuary Network is in response to President-elect Donald Trump's plan to deport millions of undocumented people. Today, over 20 church leaders announced they're opening their doors to help immigrants seeking shelter. There is a very real threat to those coming into power to tear apart homes and families, deporting millions of people. Millions! Pastor Mark Vinge and other church leaders say this isn't a political move, but a stance on faith. Churches like House of Hope and New Hope would allow refugees to reside in the worship space until another safe place can be found. Meanwhile, other congregations are taking on the role of supporting Sanctuary Church, providing food, clothing, and legal support. If anything, we should be welcoming people instead of threatening them. That's right. Like my colleagues and their congregations, House of Hope has declared itself to be a sanctuary congregation for those under threat of deportation. Immigrants and refugees are the most vulnerable people among us. They are here because they hope that the American dream is true. Now there are about 90,000 undocumented people here in Minnesota. It's not clear how many could be deported, but these faith-based groups say they will be prepared should mass de deportations occur. Mike and Alex. All right, thanks, Sonia. Robbinsdale school officials are getting a look at plans for turning part of Sandberg School back into a middle school in time for next fall. But the work to do that uh, this summer may just be the first step. 
and the school has been open and operational, so that has made this step a bit easier for us because it hasn't been in mothballs, so to speak. We've been using it every day. Since it closed as a middle school in 2009, Sandburg in Golden Valley has been home to other programs like the Robbinsdale District's High View Alternative Program. Still, there will need to be safety and security upgrades to turn part of the building back into a middle school. That work will be done this summer. The question remains, what else should be done? The district has set aside $443,000 for the upgrades. While that's more than enough to reopen the doors to an expected 660 students next fall, it may not be enough to meet today's educational standards. That $443,000 is not adequate enough to meet all the needs that are happening or that occur in the building as we look at developing 21st century education space for the students that will be attending this school. That could mean more renovation in a phase two or phase three. There are a number of science rooms in the existing building that are woefully short of plumbing. Each additional phase outlined by an architectural and engineering firm could be in the two to three million dollar range. But school officials point out that school is a lot different now than it was when Sandberg was built in the 1950s. This phase two and phase three work really looks at bringing Sandberg into the 21st century in providing an environment that meets the best practices that teachers are learning and uh, embedding into their instruction daily. The district hopes to come in under budget in the first step to reopen the building so the savings can help pay for additional upgrades in the future. And right now it is unclear when those additional upgrades might be added. A planning group of teachers, parents, and administrative staff will continue to work on the future of the school. After years of weighing different options to update the electri electrical needs of the growing Plymouth community, XL Energy believes it has found the best option. XL Energy is expected to enter into negotiations this month with the City of Plymouth to purchase about three acres of vacant land north of Schmidt Lake Road and west of 494 to build a Palmer Lake substation. The plan largely relies on connecting to existing transmission lines, minimizing the impact to residential neighborhoods. You might remember five years ago, XL Energy proposed a Hollydale transmission line project that was rejected because it would have brought high voltage power lines through neighborhoods. XL believes this new proposal will meet Plymouth's energy needs for the next 20 to 40 years. Construction of the new substation could begin as early as this coming June. Brooklyn Center is optimistic about the possibility of a home furniture store moving into a highly visible spot in the city. Ever since Kohl's department store moved out of the site along Bass Lake Road and Highway 100 in 2014, the building has sat vacant. Now, now home furniture has expressed interest in the site and would likely renovate the existing building. Brooklyn Center's mayor says home furniture would be a good fit to the nearby retail in the Shingle Creek Crossing Shopping Center. Earlier this fall, the city council voted down a proposal to build a storage facility on the site because the council did not think the plans were a good fit with the retail area. Brooklyn Park drivers will see more of those flashing yellow arrows at busy intersections in the near future. The city agreed to spend $67,000 to upgrade four intersections to include a flashing yellow arrow. Some council members thought that was a lot to spend on such an upgrade, but city engineers say they keep drivers safer during heavy traffic and help reduce delays when traffic is light. The flashing yellow means drivers are allowed to turn left after yielding to oncoming traffic. Hennepin County will install the upgraded lights next year on 97th Avenue, Noble Parkway, and two on 85th Avenue. There's a warning from the Hennepin County Sheriff that officers will be out looking for people with active arrest warrants against them. On Wednesday, city and county law enforcement are joining forces to find people who are wanted on warrants related to violent crimes. And if you're wanted on a warrant, the sheriff's office suggests turning yourself in before they knock on your door. Well, the sheriff's office does sweeps like this twice a year. They point out they make arrests on outstanding warrants year round. Coming up in today's Health Check Report, why doctors say they see more heart trouble around the holidays. And later in sports, the Osseo boys basketball team is aiming for a return trip to the state tournament. We'll have a preview of the Orioles. But first, winter weather makes a comeback in your AccuWeather forecast.
Welcome back. Before holiday celebrations begin, there is a warning about your health. Why doctors are seeing an uptick in heart-related problems on Christmas and New Year's. Emily Raguse has that story in today's Health Check. It's that time of year where the food and drinks flow freely. While there are plenty of reminders of what the extra calories can do for your waistline, Hennepin County Medical Center cardiac electrophysiologist Dr. Rehan Karim says binge drinking can hurt the heart. The term holiday heart syndrome primarily uh, has to do with abnormal heart rhythm, uh, which is the electrical part of the heart. Dr. Kareem says many times food affects the ability to pump blood through the heart. In alcohol's case, it affects the beat of the heart. A fast beating heart can lead to serious problems. The main thing we worry about with this abnormal rhythm is risk of stroke because blood clots can form in the heart and uh, those could potentially result in uh, a stroke if they dislodge from the heart and go to the brain. While the problem could fix itself after the alcohol wears off, Dr. Kareem says you should always seek medical attention if you feel your heart racing, chest pressure or pain, shortness of breath or dizziness. Although it happens in people, um, in otherwise healthy people, uh, there are times when it can actually uncover other chronic uh, heart problems. People can experience holiday heart syndrome anytime there's binge drinking, but hospitals see an uptick in cases around Christmas and New Year's. More people uh, are involved in uh, drinking around the holiday season. That is true. As the old saying goes, everything in moderation. For Health Check, Emily Raguse, 12 News. According to a study that looked at death certificates, there are 5% more heart-related deaths during the holidays than during the rest of the year. Well, coming up, we'll show you how a police vehicle is looking more like Santa's sleigh these days. But first, Maple Grove should be a top contender in boys basketball this winter. John Jacobson has that and more up next in sports. If you like high school basketball, this is going to be a really great basketball no season, doubt. I think. I mean, we have so many good teams here in the Northwest Metro. We're going to talk about a couple more of them today in uh, Boys Hoops. The Maple Grove Boys Basketball Team is one of three teams from the area ranked in the top five in the state in Class 4A. As Jay Wilcox reports, the Crimson are ready to go for another big season. It's a group that's played a lot of varsity basketball and has plenty of skill. That means expectations are high for Maple Grove this season. Uh, I'm feeling really good. Everyone we're working hard to get better during the season. We got uh, 10 seniors on the team, so we're pretty experienced. So I feel like we'll be uh, good throughout the year. I'm not sure quite what it is yet, but there's a different feel around this team than in the past. It's really good. I like it. It's some like more competitiveness, more drives. There's some, some feeling. I think we'll find that out soon. But yeah, really excited to get going. Really experienced group, and uh, we're just ready to get out there. It starts with point guard Brad Davison, one of Minnesota's top players. The Wisconsin signee is a strong presence and great leader. Taiwan Pickford missed part of last season with an injury, dealing a major blow to the Crimson's title hopes. He's back and says he's ready to go. Jack Hutchison is a great shooter and passer. Intimidating 6'10 shot blocker Reed Nicko is now playing for Missouri, so it does change the defensive look a bit. We got two big guys in Jack Hansen and Max McNillis uh, who have some size. Uh, we'll also play a little bit different. Um, we'll play a little bit smaller uh, with Taiwan running a little bit of our five spot. Um, I think it'll be fun to, to have that versatility in our, on our team to, uh, to go big and bang a little bit and uh, to play small and run a little bit. Maple Grove got back to the state tournament for the first time since 2011 last season, and although they lost their opener there, it was a great experience and one they'd like to duplicate. I think it's set a standard. Uh, the state tournament is where we always want to be and where we should be at Maple Grove here. Um, so that's our goal this year is to get back there and make a run. Anytime you can get in that building and feel that atmosphere, um, it, it, the next year if you can do it again, it, it's not as, uh, you know, the lights aren't as bright. It's a Maple Grove team that should be one of the state's better clubs. Jay Wilcox, 12 Sports. The Crimson opened the season at Rogers Friday night, then faced De La Salle in the breakdown tip-off classic Saturday at the Lindbergh Center. Osseo was also in the state tournament last season in boys basketball after surprising everyone with an undefeated regular season. The Orioles have a core of four strong returners to lead the way. 
Senior guard Marmar Hughes is quick and strong. Junior Zach Tyson, all conference pick last winter, is a deadly shooter. The twin brothers John and Matt Bezdecek do a little bit of everything. The team has potential. We are meshing pretty good so far in the first scrimmages we played in. Defense is something we are uh, trying to focus on as a team, and it's really come together and hopefully uh, works out and we start the season strong next Friday. This year our team is pretty fast, same as last year. Defensively we're strong and we can push the ball basically one through five, so we'll be a pretty fast team this year. We may see it Without any superstars that some other top teams around have, the Orioles won their first 30 games last winter, including sweeping Maple Grove and Armstrong and a win at Champlin Park. They finished fourth in the state tournament. They aren't getting a lot of attention in the rankings so far this season either, but still have high goals. Um, I think all of us could agree we want to we want to be sec uh, conference champs and eventually win our section and go back to state, but it's not going to be easy this year. We've got a tough champion team and tough conference for sure. Last year we weren't ranked in any top 20 polls to start the season. This year we might be ranked in the top 15. You know, they might give us a little bit of credit, but our kids like that underdog role and uh, we're, we'll, we'll relish it. Uh, our kids play hard no matter what, if they're ranked top or if they're ranked in the 30th. You know, we're, we're going to play hard regardless. Let's go. The Orioles open the season at the Duluth East Tournament, facing Hermantown Friday and Duluth East Saturday. Their home openers against Park Center next Tuesday. And coming up tonight, Tuesday on Channel 12, live girls basketball, top five matchup in Class 4A, Hopkins against St. Michael Albertville. Should be a good one. All right. Thanks, John. Yeah. Straight ahead, a remarkable effort by one neighborhood to collect gifts for those in need. Yeah, a close look inside a police van shows what they accomplished. We'll be right back. And finally, there are plenty of ways to give this holiday season, and in New Hope, there is a great example of that. Take a look at this. The New Hope Police Crime Prevention Van is literally stuffed full of brand new toys that will soon be delivered to underprivileged children. All the donations came from one couple that holds an annual toy fest encouraging their neighborhood to donate. New Hope Police and City Hall continue to collect toys and food donations that will be given to the Near Food Shelf, as well as Prism and Toys for Tots. It's one of the best things that I get to do as part of my job is to help to put this together and also to donate and also to be delivering those toys to families in our community that I know need them. It is not too late to drop off a new gift or food item at New Hope's Police Department or City Hall. Gifts for teens are especially in high demand. Quite a van there yeah, full of toys. One neighborhood. Very That's good all job, it was. Guys. That does it for us. Thanks so much for joining us. And we'll see you back here again Wednesday starting at 4.